Today's episode of Entertainment Drive Through is brought to you by Audible.com. Audible.com has over 180,000 audiobooks and audio products. Get your free audiobook of your choice at audibletrial.com slash eDriveThru. Welcome to Entertainment Drive Thru. Today's special is Michael Starr, Phil Panther. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Hello, hello, welcome to Entertainment Drive-Thru. I'm Anna, with me is my co-host Dan, and today we have a legendary singer. He's from the band Steel Panther. Let's welcome the one, the only, Michael Starr! Yeah! Welcome to the show! All right, now, hey, that's the introduction my guitar player should be giving me every show. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? That's, I, yeah. feel, I feel like, See, yeah. It's not, <laughs> guitar players don't realize how valuable the lead singers are. Right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Trust me, I should know. <laughs> right, right, right. Well, and I, yeah, right? I'm actually curious because you are the singer of the band, and there's a lot of people that believe that the lead singer gets all the chicks. Is that why you chose to be a singer? <laughs> well, I chose to be a guitar player, but I wasn't that good, so I ended up defaulting to being the lead singer. And yes, there's two benefits of being a lead singer. Number one, you're well, actually three. Number one, you're center of attention, which mm-hmm. is killing. Number two, you have no equipment to carry except the mic stand. <laughs> yes. And number three, I get to pick all the chicks first. Yes. <laughs> nice, nice. Well, how, I have to ask, though, you know, getting to the start of things, how did you get started as a musician? You know, my mom was the, she's actually pretty famous in the porn world. She was the very <laughs> first woman to do theater porn. Oh, oh yeah? yeah? Yeah, no one else had ever done it before, so she was a pioneer in that in the early 30s. And, uh... So I was, I came from an entertainment family, you know, my dad actually sold cocaine. So <laughs> that was a big part of my influence as a child. And, uh, you know, being around that type of environment and being backstage with my mom, it just really helped me to realize what I want to do with my life. You know, I, I want to be backstage with hot chicks mm-hmm. <laughs> and I want to party. So right. that's how I really, that's how I started getting into it. But the first performance I ever did was that school play. I played Charlie Brown when I was about 13 years old, I think. Oh, nice. And uh, I sang I sang pretty good, right? Yeah. And the attention I got after singing at the school play solidified my drive mm-hmm. to want to be on stage and be in the spotlight. Nice. Sweet. So was that, was that that moment that you realized that, you know, being a musician is, is what you were meant to do as opposed to, you know, opening up your own all-you-can-eat buffet? <laughs> you wanted to be a musician. Yeah, totally, dude. I actually worked in an all-you-can-eat buffet, and that's partly why that title is so apropos for us. But, <laughs> nice. you know, I tried, you know, working... I tried working in the fine restaurant business. You know, I worked at Burger King and McDonald's and Taco Bell, mm-hmm. and I, I washed cars. Mm-hmm. I worked at dealership. I was a tow truck driver. I used to pump gas. You know, I've done a lot of stuff, but I realized that I didn't like any of it because you had to be there on time, which mm-hmm. is not cool. <laughs> and then you have... You know, you had to listen to somebody else tell you what to do. And I just, I don't like that. You know, mm-hmm. I'd like to be able to be my own free spirit. And that's why the guitar player and I really have a hard time dealing with one another. Because he tries to tell me what to do and it reminds me of working at McDonald's. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I mean, to quote one of to quote one of your songs, you just want to party all, all day and, and fuck all night. Yeah. Well, you, you know, if you think about that song, it really... It really says a lot, you know. It's it's really how every person wants to live their life. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know I don't know about you, but for me, one of the things that draws people to Steel Panther, I think, is people want to party yes. and they want to fuck. <laughs> so, you know, if you put those two together and you get to watch a cool band doing it, you got yourself a winner, and that's Steel Panther. And then they can party like there's no tomorrow. So that's huh. right. That's right. Well, and I have to say that's that's one of the badass things about going to a Steel Panther show is, I mean, like the energy level. This is one of the things I like about it is the energy level starts at ten right from the beginning, and it just it just rises from there. I mean, people don't think you can rise much past eleven, but you guys go much past that, and it it really is a big party. Mm-hmm. 
Well, you know, that's the influence of my dad being a cocaine dealer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's really right. showing that the energy that you get from cocaine. But seriously, all joking aside, when you go to the Steel Panther show, we're not there phoning it in. We love what we do. We have a really fun time doing it. And I think that's infectious. When mm-hmm. you go see a band, not only, like, you know, we interact with the audience and, and we can pick out a few people and, and fuck with them during the show. <laughs> and it, it's just fun, man. It's a, it's a mixture a mixture of, like, music, acting, and comedy all together. I know. Right. And I also th- find it amazing who you find at a Steel Panther show because how many celebrities have you guys had up there? It's crazy. So many. I mean, I, I think of us as, like, the... I don't know, the new rat pack, except we're called the hair pack. <laughs> you know, we're, we just have a good time. You know, and everybody in the band, and I don't know if you know this, but everybody in the band can play every instrument that each guy plays, and oh. they can all sing, and they can all front their own bands. Right, yeah. So when you go see us, it's not like just, there's just one lead singer. I mean, Satchel, if I didn't interrupt him, he would talk the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> I can totally see that. But I just like, though, like how Anna was saying that, you know, that, you know, it's amazing who shows up to your shows. I mean, celebrity wise, it is kind of funny that it'll like I'll, I, I, I've, I think I've seen you like your band like three times. And each time it's like you'll look out in the crowd and you'll just like start looking at someone like, wait a minute, is that that person? And then you'll like go back to singing yeah, and then you'll like totally. look at them <laughs> and be like, holy fuck, well, I'm pulling that person on stage and then you'll just like stop everything and be like, all right, so it turns out that this person is here. I think we should get them on stage to sing a song. <laughs> yeah, and what, and what are they going to say? No? No, exactly. Right? You so pointed them, them out them. anyway, Great. so they're going to be screwed either way. So <laughs> they're like, you know what I mean? Like there's somebody going to buck them. Might as well go up on stage and have some fun. Yeah, the latest one we had on was Miley Cyrus, and that was really fun. I, nice. I, 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 spot her, I, spot, I spot her in the audience, right? Mm-hmm. And I knew it's her, and because we were singing with her dad, and I just figured she would show up, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, part of me thought, man, should we call her up? Will she, will she know any heavy metal? <laughs> and then her dad actually pulled me aside and goes, hey, dude, she knows Pour Some Sugar on Me by Def Leppard. No. I'm like, all right. <laughs> so I, I called her straight out. She was like, really scared to come up but I was like come on you've got to get up and rock with us we need the press and well, this, so also I would have thought she would have been totally up for it because she's so free these days she just she just does whatever she well, wants I, that's what I was going to say is I mean the, the thing about a, a panther show is that I mean you do get a lot yeah. of girls on stage that show their boobs and I mean <laughs> of all the celebrities today I feel like she would be okay with that right she didn't do it only because oh. her dad was there well, well, at least it got some pour some sugar. Yeah, I'm surprised, is, though. It's pour some sugar on yeah, me. Yeah, well, she really didn't know it. Yeah, Aww. she didn't know it. Her Aww. dad was lying. He just wanted to get up. <laughs> she, she knew, like, the chorus, but she didn't know the root of the song. Oh, but right. still, it was, like I said, it was fun to get her up. And it's always a challenge to get, like, we had uh, Kubo Gooding Jr. in the audience, right? Oh, my. And I'm thinking, what is this guy? He, he's not, he's a black dude. He's not going to know any metal. <laughs> I called him up and he rocked. Nice. <laughs> That's so nice. Have you been starstruck by anybody who's been there? Yes. Who? Michael Strahan from the uh, Giants. He got oh, up and jammed with us. Nice. I'm a huge NFL football fan. So when he got up, and I also sang with uh, Aaron Rodgers, too, back in the day before he, when he was a backup for Brett Favre. Yeah. Nice. And uh, that was pretty cool. But as far as singers are concerned, no, because most singers sing out of key anyway, so it really doesn't make <laughs> All right, well, we're going to take a quick break to listen to a clip from Party Like Tomorrow is the End of the World by Steel Panther. But we'll be right back. I have to ask about the, you know, the latest CD that you guys have that, you know, we made the joke about earlier, All You Can Eat. You know, how did this CD come together? I mean, you guys have just like, it's like each CD that you put out is better than the last one. You know, what, Thank you. how did this one go about? 
Well, it's pretty much we we pretty much do the same formula as we've done since we started. Mm-hmm. Uh, the only difference is on the first record we had the song for a long time because we were trying to get a record deal with them. Mm-hmm. But on the second record, we it pretty much uh, set the pace for how we do records, and we basically just when we're on tour, we hook up the recording gear on the tour bus, and Satchel will start writing tunes, and then we just record it right there and then. Oh wow! And just get it done. Nice. And we just and. Uh, you know, the, the inspiration from each record is drawn from our touring experience now. Mm-hmm. Because now, you know, we're on tour, we're touring all over the world, and we're mm-hmm. meeting different people, and we're hanging out with different bands and different festivals and stuff. And it's, it's really, it's a lot of fun, man, mm-hmm. to interact with bands. Like, this band I would never go see, but we're at a festival with them, and I go see them, and it turns out they're actually really good. Nice. So, yeah, they, you know, and plus, Plus the shit that happens backstage with her girlfriends we just have to think about. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I have to point out, the, right? I have to point out the cover though of, of the album because I, I absolutely love the fact that it's called All You Can Eat and it's got the picture of the Last Supper, but it's like you with a bunch of chicks and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's all you can eat, and it's, it's human food too as well because everybody, every guy likes to eat a girl every now and then. If you know what I'm saying, <laughs> right, right, right. And I, I get, I guess it goes without saying, but would so would that be your Last Supper? Would be a girl. <laughs> Well, absolutely, with some beer and some burgers. I mean, you know, if you notice on that table, there's pizza, man. You gotta have pizza. Everybody loves pizza. Right, have you right. ever met anyone who doesn't like ice cream or pizza in your life, ever? Oh. I think they're probably vegan. I don't know. No, I'm just kidding. No, I, it's no, so yeah, it's God, so weird. I, f- I feel like that's just, who wouldn't want that? I feel like that's just depriving them of things. Like, I'm lactose intolerant. I don't care. I'll still have pizza with cheese. I don't care. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I'll tell you, you know, Steel Panther, Steel Panther, we are the voice of people's consciousness. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you're thinking about, hey, maybe I should hire a Asian hooker, but you don't want to tell your wife about it. We'll sing the song for you, and we'll relieve that tension. Right. <laughs> I love that. I love that you point that out. Who? What? What, what was the song that we were uh, we were studying at Musicians Institute? And there were these two Asian dudes that were singing. Well, which song was it? Oh, you're you're talking about the the one about the girl from Oklahoma. Yes. <laughs> They sang girl like these. Yes. They were so innocent looking, and then they started that, and I was I laughed so hard. I thought it was so brilliant. They looked so innocent, and then they sang that, and I, I it was so see. awesome. And it was at one of those coffee shop yeah, like type of thing. You, that's perfect. That's the best way for a guy to feel out of date. Mm-hmm. To take her to the still path the show because yes. if she laughed that whole show. And she still likes you. That's a good girl, man. Yes. That, that actually is a really good point. Because seriously, if you go to if you go to a Panther show and like the girl that you're with is okay with the fact that you're like you've got like your your biggest smile because there's like <laughs> all these boobs on stage and you know the band is singing right. you know the lyrics that you're singing and they're getting the jokes and everything is good. Then I I do have to say there right. is one of two things that could be true. Either that girl is awesome or she is enjoying the boobs as much as you are and maybe yeah, you right, picked the totally. wrong girl <laughs> it's, you know it's the same it's the same value set man if you have the same values you might laugh Exactly. I, I just love though. I, I was I think it was the first time I went to see one of your shows. There was a girl who you pulled on stage, and you were like, "Oh yeah, you come on up up stage." And she's like, "Okay." And then she had like a little bit of an issue, like showing her boobs because her boyfriend was like right down in front of you guys. And I remember you guys like right. this is why I love it. It's like you guys play along with that. You're like, well. I see you down there. Maybe you should just go outside for a little bit while we hang out with your girl on stage. Right. I mean, if you're going to have a hard time with your girl showing her boobs, I get it. I understand. It's a possessive thing. But if you can let go and let your girl do what she wants, then you're going to have a great relationship, man. Because that way, you know, you get to do what you want. Mm -hmm. So true. Exactly. And and do you I, I have to ask though about the I mean you guys have had some some residencies at several places, you know, in, in Las Vegas and in Hollywood. How did those come about? Well, you know, we just started uh looking for ways to make some extra income, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. So it was getting a little diff you know, I don't know if you know about the great stripper depression in two thousand and one, <laughs> but strippers were having a really rough time supporting their band boyfriends. Mm. Okay. So we had to figure out a way to make some money. Right. So we went out and we got a gig at the Viper Room every Monday night, and we started 
just playing cover music. Okay. And that's how we got our start. And, you know, and, and then we uh, eventually started writing our own stuff and the rest is history. But the weekly show was something we did longer than any other band in the history of Hollywood has ever done. We played mm-hmm. 13 years every Monday night on the street. Right, yeah. Wow. So we hold that record. And and right now they want to give us a ho- uh, star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Yes. Oh, nice. Congratulations. Yeah, we- we just have to pay the money to do it. It's like right. thirty grand. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard about. It. I love that. I love that they're like, "Hey, we'd love to give you a star. It's the biggest honor that you can get as an entertainer." By the way, it's going to cost you like thirty right. grand to do it. <laughs> yeah, and then you have to pay a maintenance fee of fifteen hundred bucks every month. I told them I'll come out and clean it every month. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait. How does that even make sense? What is that? The guy on Hollywood Boulevard. There is Boulevard? a guy. There is a guy that that uh, hangs out. I think it's like a few specific stars. He hangs out there and he cleans them like it's like almost like that's his job yeah. that he's chosen to do and i feel so yeah, i feel like not? but that's i feel like if you were to ha- if you were to have someone do that would you just hire a bunch of girls to do that <laughs> yes <laughs> uh, yes why not exactly <laughs> just have- either that or, or i could just go back i could just go back to cleaning stars and spray painting addresses on curbs <laughs> Or what you could do is just every, like, once a month, you could just go to Hollywood Boulevard, do what Jimmy Kimmel does, like, like block out the whole street, play your show, and while you're doing the show, the girls will be, like, on the side, but they'll be cleaning your star as they'll do it, they're doing the show. Yes. So, you know, kill two birds with one stone. Mm-hmm. All right, cleaning my star, if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Today's episode of Entertainment drive Through is brought to you by Audible.com. Audible.com is offering listeners a free audiobook of your choice and a free 30-day trial membership. Just go to audibletrial.com slash eDriveThru and choose from over 180,000 audio programs. Download a title free and start listening. It's just that easy. Go to audibletrial.com slash eDriveThru. That's audibletrial.com slash eDriveThru and get started today. With, you know, the the success of this band, you know, and the 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 length of the band, how what has been one of the biggest challenges for you? Well, we we still have not gotten on radio. Okay. And for some reason, there's still the misconception that we're a cover band and mm. that, you know, it's almost like ta- taboo to put us on the radio. Plus, we're pretty dirty, so that's pretty <laughs> difficult. <laughs> Right. But that's only that's only in America, mm. around the world, Australia, you know, uh, Europe. We're on the radio all the time. So mm. I come home from tour, and I'm turn on Octane, you know, Steel Panther. Go to Canada, turn on the radio station, Steel Panther's playing. Nice. So that's one that we have been trying to crack, and but not cracking it in a way where okay, we're going to dumb down our music, we're going to play you know, stuff that will get on this radio station. We just, we will not change our tune to, to conform to anybody else. Because, by the way, I don't know if you know this, but heavy metal rules. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Well, and I feel, I feel like if you were to censor your music, like, I mean, what would it even be? I mean, that, cause that's the point of your music mm-hmm. is it has to have everything in there. And I, like, I, I mean, that's the, th- I have this big problem with, with radio today. I mean, it's always, it's been like this for uh, decades, but you know, I mean, I hate the fact that they feel they have to censor. It's like, if, if you want, if you want the music that you played on your play on your radio station censored, play something else, you know, play something you don't have to sensor i don't understand why there's this big need for it no there really isn't man i mean we can dumb down our music and just turn it into doctory but then who wants to be on a station that plays that stuff right. i want to be on a new cut cutting edge station you know something that's different and unique something that's just calling for like steel panther is unique we're different nobody does what we do and nobody can do it now we need a radio station to to match that for mm-hmm. us right very true. Exactly. And and I, I have another question I wanted to ask, you know, about, you know, now your career as a whole, you know, what has been some of the best advice that someone's given you that maybe you would recommend to someone just getting started? Well, my dad gave me the best advice. He said, don't ever give up. Okay. No matter what. And I said, oh, okay, well, can I have 10 bucks? He's like, don't ever give up. No. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That really is per- perseverance is the number one is is the number one key 
the success in the music business. You just can't give up because still, we, Satchel and I have been together since 81. Wow. Right. And we, he wrote Death Album Metal back, back then, right? Mm-hmm. And we shopped it and we shopped it and guys, A&R people, the label, they were saying no, 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 no. Fast forward 10 years later, those people that were saying no, not only are their bosses no longer at the label, it's a bunch of new people. Yep. And then you shop it to them and you can never give up, continue, boom, we got a deal. Mm-hmm. Right. Don't give up. Well, and I have to say, because you brought up the you brought up the '80s, I heard there was a story about you guys that you actually like you started in the '80s and you were actually going to get a record contract. Like you got the contract and everything, but on the day that you were supposed to come in and sign it, you didn't show up. Right. <laughs> we decided that at that point, everyone thought if we sign ourselves to this big machine, we're going to get eaten up alive, and they're going to tell us exactly what we have to do Mm -hmm. right and that's another thing where we just decided you know what screw it we're not going to conform because everyone wanted to change us and just have us be you know not do what we do and and i I don't know man i'm so glad we stuck to our guns because by the time we got to universal republic Mm -hmm. the president of the label monty Lipman, said i want to sign you guys and you can do whatever you want nice whatever you want and we're like and we were like, okay. And it, it was his idea to make Death All But Metal our first single, which I thought was just awesome, man. Yeah. Right. What balls that guy. That's and a, hell of a, a hell of a first single. Thank you. Yeah. And I, I have to say. I'm hearing that on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, love that, I love that when you guys made that music video, you got Sarah Silverman in it, and she, com- she confused it for Death to All But Metal. <laughs> And you were like, no, man, death to all right. but metal. <laughs> you know, it really seems like it, it's a bit that was created, but she is so non-metal, you have no idea. <laughs> she really honestly, honestly thought that we were talking death to all but metal. And I'm not, I'm not funny, man. She's just like, she's a hilarious comedian. She's so funny. I, I couldn't believe she thought that shit. <laughs> <laughs> and I have I have to ask, like as as you, what would you what would you say are some bands that are butt metal? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> butt metal would be like uh well I have to go back to the eighties because there's no butt metal anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but butt metal used to be a term that they used for us. Okay. Yeah. They used to call us butt metal because they wear spandex and you can see our ass, right? <laughs> Nowadays you look at bands, they're all they're all, before the skinny jean, prior to that was the baggy jeans. Okay. And you couldn't see anybody's ass. So it was like, you know, you get a, a lead singer back to your apartment and start having sex with him and find out he's got a big, dumpy, sloppy ass. Nobody <laughs> likes that. So I guess, I guess you're saying that, that David Lee Roth would be in, in that category of butt metal because he always wore the assless uh-huh. chaps. <laughs> That was the man, dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Even after Rose wore buttless chaps. That's true. That's true. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we are getting close to the end of the interview here. But before we go, where are places that our listeners can find out more information about you and your awesome band, Steel Panther? Very simple. There's this new thing called the Internet. <laughs> and all you do is you open up the Safari or the Windows or the whatever you have right. and just type in the Google bar Steel Panther and your life will change. Mm. If you click on videos, then you're like, you'll be stuck in this virtual rabbit hole that you won't be able to get out of because you won't be able to believe the shit that you're about to see. So enjoy yourself. Right. And they have to, you have to go to a live show to see the magic. Like, oh, absolutely. It's not even like online is magic, but... Going to a live show, it's just, it's going to blow your mind. Well, and actually, I do have to ask one last question, because I can't believe we didn't ask this at the beginning. Where did the name Steel Panther come from? Because I understand you guys used to be metal school. Yeah, we were metal shop, metal school, Danger Kitty, and then we decided on Steel Panther. The name actually came from Lexi. Okay. He's really into cats. He has, his mom has like 15 cats or whatever. <laughs> and we're trying to figure out a name for a band. And he's like, well, you know, we should call ourselves Metal Panther. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, that, that doesn't sound too cool, man. <laughs> but Steel Panther sounds pretty rad. Yeah. And think about it. Steel, a, pa- a panther has four legs, right? Mm-hmm. So the first right paw is the lead singer, Satch is the left paw, and then the rhythm section are the two back paws with the, with the cat ship. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Uh, unfortunately, we are down to the end of our interview now, but thank you so much, Michael, for being on the show. It's really been an absolute honor to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate your time, man. I look forward to talking to you again. That's oh, metal rules. Yeah. Absolutely. And for more information on Michael Starr, Steel Panther, and the podcast, go to entertainmentdrivethrough.com and subscribe on iTunes. Like and follow us on our Facebook at facebook.com slash entertainmentdrivethrough and our Twitter and Instagram at eDriveThru. Hey, what's up? This is Michael Starr from Steel Panther. You've been listening to Entertainment Drive-Thru. Wow! 